So in this video, we are going to go through a presentation similar to what you would receive when we explain the different options that we provide to you if you're in the process of looking at different high cash value life insurance policies. So we're going to go through the presentation. This is for a young couple, a 31-year-old husband and a 33-year-old wife. Let's get on into it. So in what we're going to look at here in this video is as I just mentioned, the husband age 31, wife age 33, and they wanted to see different options of high cash value life insurance policies. So what we put together per our last discussion as we discussed different numbers, different products, different funding periods is for the husband, one, he has a health rating of non-smoker at best. He does have some health issues, so we did not run that at preferred. And he wanted to fund a policy for a short period of time, or at least he wanted to see what a policy would look like if it was funded for a short period of time. He's very interested in maximizing the internal rate of return, maximizing the cash value, that is. So we looked at Guardian's 15 pay product here, which is very similar to Guardian's L95 product, but provides a little bit more cash value up front, with the trade-off being you can only pay premiums for a maximum of 15 years. What we looked at is $10,000 per year for seven years, then also $50,000 per year for seven years. At the end of seven years, we went reduced paid up, eliminating the premium altogether, which will enhance the overall internal rate of return. And we ran illustrations with both the basic dividend rate, which is 5.65%, and then also the indexed rider, which if you have questions on that, I would check out our indexed video, which provides more information there. So for the wife, he wanted to see different life insurance companies. So what we put together for the wife is one, we ran all of the illustrations at preferred. Uh, he did, did mention she is very healthy and she'll probably receive the top health rating, which, which is ultra preferred, but we ran everything at regular preferred. Ran different products with Mass Mutual, a higher early cash value policy, which we can make payments up until age 85. However, they do not want to see funding that long. So what we ran, ran as far as options is the $10,000 per year option at five years, 15 years, and 30 years. The fun part about this when we, go, when we get to the different options for the wife is that you will notice they are all the exact same policy. The design is identical from day one. The only difference is if the client actually decides to continue to fund it beyond five years. So they may approach, approach this policy, I wanna fund it 10K per year for five years, but hey, things are going very well. I want to continue to fund it. Maybe it's 15 years, maybe it's 30 years, maybe it's longer or anywhere in between. My point is they have flexibility to adjust that funding period as the years pass. Then we also ran a 15 pay with Mass Mutual, which is great to enhance the internal rate of return. So this policy does produce stronger internal rates of return than their higher early cash value product. And we can run the same options with 10K per year going into the policy, but because we are showing $10,000 per year and $50,000 per year and multiple products in an effort just to condense things and not overwhelm them with a million different options, we ran the 15 pay policy only with $50,000 per year for five years and then, only and then also 15 years being that the longest period we can actually pay into the policy is for 15 years with a 15 pay policy. So let's get on into it here. Uh, what I will add first, first is regarding the different companies, the big, big difference has to do with this guy right here, flexibility particularly when it comes to adding money into the PUA rider, I would check out our Mass Mutual and Guardian flexibility video that does provide a full breakdown of the differences in PUA flexibility with Mass Mutual and Guardian. As a quick, quick overview, Guardian is a company that will allow you to commit to the minimum. So if I got a $10,000 total payment going in, I can literally commit to a minimum premium of about $1,000 per year. It'll be a little bit more than that with the term rider, and then just throw additional funds into PUAs at my discretion. Whereas Mass Mutual, I have to make the premium and PUA payment all at the same time. I can adjust that PUA payment. However, when I can easily adjust the PUA payment without any medical underwriting at all, 
is one, one time per year, every year, provided that adjustment fall on the policy anniversary date. Let's get into the numbers. So what we put together for them is one, a quick spreadsheet that lays the different options out side by side. So beginning with the husband's options, the $10,000 per year sample that is, we see $10,000 per year going into the policy and we see a Guardian 15 pay product here funded for seven years. Now we see two different illustrations, or I should say two different results when we focus on the cash value. You'll notice the first three years on these examples are identical. However, beginning the fourth year, there is a difference. So the for the first three years, I paid in $10,000 per year. By year three, I've got 28,283. The same thing is going on over here. However, beginning the fourth year, in this indexed rider illustration, I begin to see greater cash value over here with the indexed illustration than what I see with the dividend illustration. And the reason why is when we look at Guardian's indexed rider, when I'm attaching a one year term rider to the policy, the indexed rider does not kick in until after the first three years. So beginning year four, when I actually run the different illustrations, and you'll see that on the breakdown, the actual detailed illustration. So both examples here, regardless if I'm going with the basic dividend or the indexed feature, break even in year five. So the drawback here, when I look at the actual numbers, my question to you, if you're this 31 year old individual, would be this. When you look at the different numbers here, the numbers, what is the thing you dislike about the policy the most? And where everyone goes immediately, is this right here. I pay in $10,000 and I've got 84, almost $8,500 to show for it in cash value. So I don't care how we slice that. I don't care what the dividend interest rate is. That is almost a negative 15% hit in the first year. I take a loss there. Now, beginning the second year, I pay in $10,000. I see the cash value grow from 84 to 18,146. So do I get the full 10K back? Almost, but not quite. If I just stuffed it under my mattress, earning 0%, what would happen here, if I added 10,000 to 8,463, I would, I would have 18,463. I've got a little bit less than that. And the reason why, what happens with the insurance premium during the first two years? Company is overcharging me. In this product, it's only the first year. However, there is an insurance expense still in the second year. I have a term rider attached as well. I have PUA fees. A nice way to simplify things is in the first two years of this policy, when I look at the illustration, the interest earned is not outpacing the expenses on the policy. However, beginning year three, you pay in $10,000, and what do you notice? You get more back than that $10,000 you pay in. It's not very much, but you do get your 10K back plus about another $140. And it gets better and better from that point forward. Stop funding altogether after seven years. Same thing over here with the index rider. Now, he does have the option to continue to make payments if he chooses to do so. However, we are stopping altogether in this example after seven years. When we look at the breakdown as to where his money is actually going, so let's take a look at the detailed illustration. Here we go, 31 year old individual. This is a page, this is page 14 from the full illustration. Let's make this a little bit smaller here. <clears throat> there we go, perfect. So when we look at this guy, what do we notice here? Top right hand corner, we see the actual annual premium. This $910, represents the base premium. So this $910 is the minimum commitment. It's, it's a little bit more than that. I'll hit on why in a second, but that's our minimum base premium. And Guardian as a company will allow us to illustrate a maximum of 10X that base premium in PUAs, which is where we came up with that base premium of just over $900 and then that PU8 rider in this example of 10X that for a total of $10,000. What I'll add as a quick side note, 
this read scheduled, in reality, we would set this up as an unscheduled PUA rider. This way, the client has the ability to commit just to the minimum and add additional funds into the unscheduled PUA rider at his discretion. So regarding what his true minimum payment is, like what's my minimum out of pocket? What will I be billed for each year if this is actually my policy? If this is the option he goes with, here's how it will work. I've got the base premium. Then I also have the cost of the term rider. Now that term rider is less than $250. And why that's important to note is in this particular example, that PUA payment first covers the term rider and, and everything left over goes in the PUAs. Whatever your scheduled PUA rider is will firstly cover the term rider. The $250, why this is important, is Guardian has a rule that when I have a scheduled PUA rider attached to a policy, it must be at least $250 per year and as long as I'm covering that, I can add unscheduled PUAs at my discretion. So in this example, because the minimum unscheduled PUA of $250 exceeds the term cost, all I am committed to would be the base premium plus the 250. So if we were to round up in this particular example, let's call it $1,200, a little bit less than that, but I can commit to $1,200 per year or a hundred bucks per month. And then at my discretion, I can just throw everything else into PUAs up to a total of $10,000 per year. Here, we just scheduled it for simplicity, 10K per year going in. Where we came up with that bit of an oddball death benefit, $265,000, is that gets him just over a mech limit of guess what? $10,000. So now I've got the minimum death benefit I can possibly attain in order to be able to pay up to $10,000 per year. So the question I always like to ask is how much do you want the ability to add into a policy on any given year? And then what we'll do is commit to the minimal amount. So if you said $10,000, let me commit to 10,000, let me commit to $1,000 per year or 1200 bucks in this example. And then at my discretion, I can add up to $10,000 per year. And how do I reduce costs as much as possible so I can have more cash value as a result? Interesting stuff, isn't it? Let's continue on here. So there's one detailed illustration. Let's take a look at the wife's samples here at the same 10,000 per year. So for the 10K per year samples, we looked at Mass Mutual's high early cash value product. And what I wanna add about this, when we look at this example here, is you've got three samples, but they are all the same policy. If someone is uncertain as to how long they want to be able to pay into the policy, they might wanna pay into it forever, but they might wanna stop at a certain age or maybe after five years, they don't know. It's very, very important to get that policy designed properly from day one, meaning I don't wanna show one example where a five-year funding, funding example has a death benefit of $310,000, and then a 30-year example has a death benefit of $500,000, from day one that is because if it's a different death benefit up front, that means the policy was designed differently or has a different PUA amount going in the first year. I want the design to be identical. This way, after the policy is started, if I, the policyholder, want to make adjustments, I can do so. And I don't have to jump through a bunch of hoops to do so. Like whatever, whatever I wanna do, I can do with respect to the funding period. The difference here compared to Guardian, where we can commit to the minimum and add more discretion is we can make payment adjustments one time per year. So if I paid in $10,000 the first year, year two, things were slower, I would have to adjust my payment. Let's say it's down to $3,000. But then the following year, if you wanted to increase it again, we would have to wait until, until our policy anniversary date, which we could go back up to $10,000. We could even pay in $17,000 and make up for lost time from the prior year, making a mech catch-up payment. So let's focus on this example here. 
We've got 10K per year for five years. This is a high early cash value policy. What that means is the first year you paid in $10,000 and you've got over 90% in cash value. And this is not someone paying in $1 million per year. This is $10,000 per year, just about 92% right off the bat. Year two, however, I do want to highlight this point. Look at this. He pays in $10,000 or she pays in $10,000. Using the example, if she's earning 0%, if I add $10,000 to 9169, what would happen? It would be 19169, but it is not. <laughs> I got less back than what I paid in. However, the third year, I pay in 10,000 again. I get it back plus just a tad more on top of it. And then it gets better and better each year. Breaking even at the same year five mark as that guardian example we looked at. Now, in this particular example, we pay in zero from the sixth year onward. There's my death benefit. We dropped the term rider. We also went reduced paid up at the beginning of year eight in this particular example. And then as we look at the 15-year funding example, look through the fifth year. Do you, do you see any changes at all in the values when we compare year five to year five? The answer is no, because they are identical policies. What we see as far as a difference is concerned is beginning year six, because I'm still adding $10,000 per year to the product. By year 15, I've paid in 150 and I've got 192. Fantastic. Scroll your eyes to the right here. You've got the same 192, same 722 in death benefit as well. The difference though, on the example to the far right, 30 years, we keep funding the policy. We can scroll down here a bit, funding it almost up until age 65. So this demonstrates Mass Mutual's flexibility with their high early cash value product where I can continue to make payments. If I look at the detailed illustrations, here's what I'll see. Here's the example where I pay into it for five years, base premium, a little bit higher than 10% here. If, if she was paying in 12,000 or 13,000 per year, we'd have a clean 10%. But here, we've got the base premium still at the minimum with the higher the cash value product, 10K per year. Year six and seven. What I wanna hit on here, this annual surrender, what this represents is the base premium that is still due, but she's not paying it out of pocket. What's happening here is the policy is paying for itself through dividends and interest. And then in year eight, in this particular example, we exercise a reduced paid up option, which eliminates the term rider, eliminates the base premium. There's no premium due anymore. And it does drop the death benefit in this example. The advantage is because no premiums due, that cash value grows at a faster rate. And this is especially true when I look at the guaranteed values. These are non-guaranteed values. And then we've got another illustration, which we looked at on Excel already. This is the 30-year funding option. And the 30 years, I've got just about 583 in cash value. And this will match the Excel comparison sheet. So if we were to look at the $50,000 per year options, let's take a look here and we added the internal rates of return here as well. We've got them on the 10K per year spreadsheets too, but I just removed those for the sake of simplicity so we can focus on the numbers first and then begin to look at the IRRs. You'll notice almost an identical trend here in terms of what percentage of his payment shows up in cash value in the first year. 50 goes into the policy. Look at this, you've got 42.3 in cash value which is just about a 15% hit when I look at the actual loss on my cash value. I paid in 50, I've got 42 and change. Annual IRR displays what the actual growth rate is year over year, whereas the average internal rate of return takes into account all years I am making payments. So if I look at this example, same 50K per year for seven years, break even point, just like the 10K per year example. 
you'll notice that the average internal rate of return is in the red until I break even, until I see it highlighted in yellow. The annual IRR is no longer in the red once I see the cash value growing by more than what I pay in. Example, year two, my cash value is $90,806. I pay in $50,000. If it was earning 0%, it would then be worth $140,806. But instead, my cash value has accumulated to 141,552 and then continues to appreciate each year. Then I go reduced paid up. Over here with the index rider, we actually don't go reduced paid up with this. We just reduce the death benefit and base premium. It's all an after the fact change anyway. It's an extra technical detail that I don't know that I have to mention. <laughs> but anyway, same thing over here. So if we take a look at the detailed ledger here, ledger statement, everything will look identical. Times five. Base premium, $4,500 and change. What are we doing with the actual payments here? 4,500 base premium. Then we see a PUA payment of $45,000 and change. No premium. PUA. Total of 50K. That PUA payment satisfies that term rider. So this is a good example actually because Guardian's minimum scheduled PUA rider is what? If you wanted to commit to the minimum only, is $250. In this example, the cost of the term rider is more than $250. So if he goes with this policy, what is his true minimum commitment? And the answer to that question, it would be the base premium plus the cost of the term rider. Because if I enter in this illustration a scheduled PUA rider of $250, that's not enough to cover the term rider. If I enter a scheduled PUA rider of $438.54, I would do something more like $450 bucks, just to round up and make numbers clean. That would cover the term rider and everything left over would go into scheduled PUAs. And that does cover the $250 minimum scheduled PUA. So that one year term rider, if I have that attached, whatever I'm allocating toward that does satisfy the minimum PUA requirement. So my point is here, if he said, what's my minimum? Well, you can commit to a true minimum of about $5,000 per year in this example, and then 100% at your discretion, add another $45,000 per year into PUAs, which will just allow you to hyper grow the policy. 50K per year. There we go. Indexed rider at 0%. So this is a basic dividend illustration. Cash value, year five, 250. That's my break even point. So many business owners and real estate investors are looking at how can I break even as quickly as possible because I'm interested in a cash value life insurance product for the core benefits being safe, liquid, tax-free, but the reason I would not do it is if it costs me too much upfront because I can use that money for other things that provide greater benefits. So how do I lessen the upfront hit where I'm comfortable with it and still be able to utilize this policy indefinitely? This demonstrates that design. We minimize the base premium is really all we are doing in this example. So let's wrap up now. With the wife's example, which is the 15 pay. So this is the 50K per year. So this is a different mass mutual product. Now, what do we notice up front here? What was the high early cash value first year equity? It's a little over 92% or just about 92%, which would be what? About an 8% loss, meaning a negative 8%, a little bit more than that, if we were to look at the annual IRR. This example is close. So I pay in 50, I've got 44,840, just about a 10% hit. Now a 15 pay product allows you to pay into the policy for a maximum of 15 years. Limited pay products, particularly Mass Mutual's 15 pay, their 10 pay as well, are geared for strong long-term internal rates of return. 
That's how MassMutual has positioned those new products. So I've got strong long-term performance, but if you do things right, you do have strong upfront cash value as well. So here we go. $200,000 by year four when you've paid in $200,000. That actually breaks even earlier than the high early cash value example. Here's what I'm gonna add. This is almost a clean 200,000 by year four. In my opinion, if this was me, looking at dividends, if that dividend comes down even a little bit, or if Mass Mutual makes other adjustments on their insurance expenses, mortality charges, even slightly over the first four years, that true break even point, I don't know if it's actually gonna be two, actually going to be year four at a clean 200,000. That might be 198 or 197. I could be very, very close, but to guarantee it's going to be breaking even year four, no, I wouldn't do that. I'd be much more confident <laughs> telling someone year five is realistic. If this was 201 or 202, okay, year four, that could very well happen. But just with being so, so close to 200K in year four, it could, and it could do a little bit better. Who knows if dividends will go up a bit, but at the same time, like, uh, I don't know about that. Probably closer to year five, just to properly set expectations. If it does better than that, we're all happy. So there we go, year five. Both options are identical. When I look at the cash value and death benefit, and then as time passes, the only difference I see here is what? I continue to fund this policy at 50K per year through the 15th year. So I've paid in 750 and I've got over a million. So wheat. If we look very quickly at where the money is going, just the breakdown of the illustration. Here's my 15 pay. There's my base premium. We've got term riders attached. PUAs, here's what I want to hit on now. Do the values on the illustration match the Excel spreadsheet? The answer will always be yes. The simple reason why is when, it, when you receive the Excel comparison sheets from us, all we do is just take the data from the, the detailed illustration or the illustration software, export it on Excel. This way we can look at a clean side-by-side -side comparison just like what we, we saw. So that is a quick overview of the different options for the client. How I would refine the decision-making process in this particular case is really looking at the flexibility. If you like the idea of committing to the minimum premium where you are billed for, call it 1,200 bucks per year, or if you go with the $50,000 example, $5,000 per year, where you can commit to the minimum and then 100% at your discretion, pour more funds into PUAs, you can just log on your online, online account through your laptop, through your mobile app, mail in a check. Very, very flexible there. That's what Guardian gives you. A lot of real estate investors and business owners are attracted to it for that reason. However, the sweet spot with Guardian would be something like this, funding it for seven years, maybe for 10 years and stopping. You could do something like this where you max fund it for seven years, but then beginning the eighth year, you said, you know what? I'm only going to pay in, say it's the 10K per year example, 2,000 per year, a reduced amount. And that's for MEC purposes and also Guardian's PUA limitations after the first 10 years that is. But my point is Guardian is great if I really wanna max fund it for 10 years or less and then stop or just pay a reduced amount in, but I've got the flexibility to add a discretion. And then Mass Mutual is great if one is comfortable and disciplined enough for a one time per year payment adjustment. Meaning I cannot add funds to PUAs in the same manner I could with Guardian, but I'm fine with the one time per year payment adjustment. I can make that adjustment on my policy anniversary date, which is my premium due date. So the disadvantage is that lack of flexibility, but the advantage is that I can continue to max fund the policy with a 1090 split for almost as long as I'd like, depending on the product. If it's the 15 pay policy, I can fund it for a maximum of 15 years with a 1090 split. Can also stop earlier. If it's the hourly cash value product, well, I can max fund it literally up until age 85, but I don't have to go that long either. So I can continue to add a large dollar amount to the policy or not. 
we can adjust the payment downwards. Maybe the, maybe they go 10K per year for 15 years in this example. Oopsie daisy. 10K per year for 15 years. And then after that, they pay in 5K per year. And then maybe they increase again in the future. So we can make these very, very flexible. So I hope that this video was helpful. If you have any questions, let us know if you're working with uh, our company already, or if you would like to, uh, feel free to let us know any questions that you have. And thanks so much for watching this video. Enjoy. Hey guys, Steve Parisi here. If you enjoyed the content you just saw, please subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell for future videos. If you'd like more information or to see some custom policies for yourself, feel free to call or email our offices at the contact information below.